Welcome today we have three short scary stories of people who decided to share them with us and joy. It was the summer of 2004, and my friends and I were out having fun. We decided to head to the local woods and lake for a swim. As we played and splashed in the water, the sun had set, and the sky was painted with beautiful hues of pink and orange. It was a perfect day, and we were having the time of our lives. As we were getting ready to leave, I noticed a shadowy figure watching us from behind a tree. The figure seemed to be observing us, but as soon as I noticed it, it quickly darted away into the darkness. I was spooked but decided to brush it off and continue my fun. We headed back to my house and played PS2 for a while. However, as the night wore on, we grew bored and decided to go explore the woods again. As we wandered deeper into the woods, we noticed that it seemed eerily silent. The only sound we could hear was the crunching of leaves beneath our feet. Suddenly, we heard a faint rustling in the bushes ahead. We stopped in our tracks, and our eyes widened in fear as we saw a dark figure emerging from the bushes. The figure was a man, but he seemed to be out of his mind. He was wielding an axe, and his eyes were wild with rage. My friends and I screamed and started to run in the opposite direction, but the man started to chase after us. We ran as fast as we could, but the man was gaining on us. We could hear his heavy footsteps behind us, and we knew that we couldn't outrun him. We stumbled upon an old abandoned cabin and ran inside, quickly barricading the door with whatever we could find. The man pounded on the door, screaming and shouting obscenities at us. My friends and I huddled together, trembling with fear, not knowing what to do next. We could hear the man trying to break down the door, and we knew that it was only a matter of time before he succeeded. The man continued to pound on the door, and I knew that we had to come up with a plan fast. We searched the cabin for any kind of weapon, but all we could find were some old rusty tools. It was clear that we were no match for the man and his axe. As we huddled together, trying to come up with a plan, we could hear the man's voice grow louder and more aggressive. He was taunting us, saying that he was going to kill us all. Suddenly, we heard a loud crash, and the door burst open. The man had broken through the barricade, and he was now standing in front of us, his axe raised high above his head. My heart raced as I thought that this was it, the end of our lives. But then, something strange happened. The man suddenly dropped his axe and collapsed to the ground, writhing in pain. It was then that I noticed that my friend had picked up one of the old tools we had found earlier and had hit the man in the back of the head. It was a risky move, but it had saved our lives. We quickly called the police, and they arrived within minutes. The man was taken away in an ambulance, and we were questioned about what had happened. It turned out that the man was a mentally unstable schizophrenic who had been on the loose for years. We had narrowly escaped becoming his next victims. After that night, I never went back to those woods again. The memories of that terrifying night still haunt me to this day, and I am grateful to be alive. I had always been an avid camper, and so when my best friend, Jack, suggested we go on a camping trip to the woods nearby, I was thrilled. It was the summer of 2008, and we were both excited to spend a weekend in the great outdoors. We arrived at the campsite just before dusk, and we quickly set up our tents and started a fire. As we were cooking dinner, we noticed that there was something strange about the woods around us. It was as if the trees were whispering to each other, and there was an eerie feeling in the air. We brushed it off as our imagination playing tricks on us, and we continued with our meal. However, as the night progressed, the feeling of unease only grew stronger. We started hearing strange noises, and we could feel as if someone or something was watching us. Jack tried to calm me down, telling me that it was just our nerves and the sounds of the forest, but I couldn't shake the feeling that we were not alone. As we were settling into our tents for the night, I heard a faint whisper outside our tent. I immediately woke Jack up, and we both listened intently. We heard the whispering again, but this time it was louder, and we could make out a few words. It sounded like someone was saying, leave now. We were both terrified, and we quickly packed up our things and started to make our way back to the car. As we were walking, we noticed that we were being followed by something. We couldn't see what it was, but we could hear its footsteps getting closer and closer. 
We started running, but the footsteps only grew louder, and we could hear something breathing heavily behind us. It was as if whatever was following us was toying with us, letting us get a bit ahead before closing in. We ran blindly through the woods, trying to find our way back to the car. However, we soon realized that we were lost. We had no idea where we were or how to get back to the campsite. As we were trying to figure out our next move, we heard a loud growl behind us. We turned around and saw a pair of glowing eyes staring back at us. We couldn't make out what it was, but it was large and menacing. We were frozen in fear, not knowing what to do next. Suddenly, the creature lunged at us, and we both fell to the ground. We tried to fight it off, but it was too strong. It pinned us to the ground, and we could feel its hot breath on our faces. As we were about to give up hope, the creature suddenly disappeared, and we were left alone in the woods. We quickly got up and started running again, not stopping until we finally stumbled upon the car. We drove back to town, shaken and terrified by our experience. We didn't talk much on the way back, still in shock over what had just happened. It wasn't until we got home that we started to piece together what had happened. We did some research and found out that the woods we had camped in were known for their paranormal activity. People had reported seeing strange creatures and hearing unexplainable noises. We also found out that there had been several disappearances in the area, all of which had remained unsolved. To this day, Jack and I still talk about that camping trip. It was an experience that we will never forget, and one that has left us both with a healthy respect for the power of the unknown. I'm 60 years old now, but the memories of the summer of 1980 are still etched in my mind. My brother and I lived in a small, boring town, and we were always looking for ways to have fun. One hot evening, we decided to explore the woods at the edge of town. We had heard stories about strange things happening in the woods, but we never believed them. As we entered the woods, the air grew cooler, and the trees became denser. We could barely see anything beyond the shadows cast by the moon. My brother and I walked further into the woods, laughing and joking, until we saw a figure standing in the distance. It was tall, and it seemed to be watching us. We couldn't make out its face, but we knew something was not right. My brother and I froze in our tracks as we watched the shadow figure. It was too dark to see any details, but we could feel its presence. I whispered to my brother to stay calm, but he was already shaking with fear. We started to back away slowly, hoping that the figure would disappear into the shadows. But as we took a step back, the figure began to move towards us. We could hear its footsteps crunching the leaves on the ground. We turned around and ran as fast as we could, but the figure was following us. We could feel its breath on the back of our necks. We ran for what felt like an eternity until we finally reached the edge of the woods. We collapsed on the ground, panting and gasping for air. We had never felt so scared in our lives. We looked back into the woods, but the figure was gone. The next day, my brother and I were still shaken by our encounter with the shadow figure. We tried to convince ourselves that it was just our imagination, but we knew deep down that something was not right. We decided to do some research on the woods to see if there were any stories about strange occurrences. We discovered that the woods had a dark history. There were stories of disappearances, strange rituals, and ghost sightings. We also found out that the woods were home to an ancient Native American burial ground. We realized that the shadow figure we saw could be the ghost of one of the buried tribesmen. Despite our fear, my brother and I were drawn back to the woods. We felt like we needed to confront the shadow figure and put our fears to rest. We decided to bring a camera and a tape recorder to document any strange occurrences. As we entered the woods, we could feel the same chill we felt the night before. We walked deeper into the woods, and as we approached the area where we saw the shadow figure, the temperature dropped even further. We set up the camera and the tape recorder and started to ask questions. We didn't get any response, but we could hear strange noises and whispers. Suddenly, the shadow figure appeared again. It was standing in front of us, and we could feel its presence. We tried to take a photo, but the camera wouldn't work. The figure started to move towards us, and we ran as fast as we could. We could hear it chasing us, but we didn't look back. 
After that night, my brother and I never went back to the woods. We were too scared to face the shadow figure again.